it is. What's up guys? Today I've got my hands on a new and affordable LED home cinema projector. So this is the Seabest W13. It's a full HD resolution projector in a small compact form factor and can be picked up for only £134. So I'm quite excited to see how this one performs. So let's begin with the specs. So this is an LED video projector. Lamp life is 30,000 hours. Brightness is 1500 lux lumens. So if we convert 1500 lux lumens to ANSI lumens, that means this projector has only 50 ANSI lumens. So technically not that bright, but we will certainly test this out later in the video. Furthermore, the projector has a native 1080p resolution and it does not support 4K decoding. You've got 10,000 to one contrast ratio, you have built in 5 GHz Wi-Fi and Bluetooth version 5. This does support manual focus and manual keystone correction. Maximum optimal screen size is 200 inches. And this does have built-in hi-fi stereo speakers. Now, if we talk design, this thing is super compact in size. On the front, we have a lens cover behind which you can see the main projector lens. And next to it, you can see an IR receiver for the remote control. And on the side, we have a full-size USB-A port for multimedia playback. We've got HDMI input for your favorite game consoles and TV boxes. And we have 3.5 millimeter ports for AV and headphone jack. And if we keep going on the back, you will find another IR receiver for the remote and a power socket. And on this side, we have some ventilation and that will bring us back to the front of the projector. And at the top of the projector, you will find manual control dials for focus and keystone correction. And just underneath, you will see some navigational controls, including power button. And a quick look on the reverse side of the projector, you will see we have a universal tripod thread. So you can hook this up to any tripod or ceiling mount. OK, so the first thing we are going to test is, of course, the fan noise. So standing right next to the projector, you can expect a fan noise of around 43 decibels. Now, if we move one meter back, the fan noise drops down to around 36 decibels. All right, projectors all set up. We're just over two and a half meters away from the wall in front of us, and we're projecting just over 100 inches. If I show you on the ultra wide lens, you can see nearly the whole wall has been taken up in this small room. If we just go back to 1x zoom, this is the home screen. We've got shortcuts there for DLNA iOS cast and Android mirror cast. Now over here we have setup, HDMI, AV, and then USB 2. So if we go to setup first of all, just quickly show you what we have here. We've got some presets for picture, standard, dynamic, mild, and user. If you want to ceiling mount this projector, you can rotate the image, um, flip it around, etc. Same with sound mode, you've got some presets that you can play with. We've got some timer options there if you need it. It's off by default. OSD language, I need to show you this. So these are all the languages you can expect. I'm literally skimming through them just to show you and you can read them for yourself. Now, right at the end, you've got your Wi-Fi settings and I'm pleased to say that five gigahertz Wi-Fi is supported. Now, the first thing I'm gonna test is screen mirroring and we're gonna start off with iOS. So here's my iPhone, swipe down from the top, select screen mirroring, tap on it, and any second now, your screen should be mirrored. There you go, guys. Screen mirroring working absolutely fine. And it's working with actually quite minimal lag. It's pretty fast, guys. Let's go back and test out Android to make sure it works. Okay, select Smart View, and you can see projector name has come up. I'm just going to tap on Start now. And any second now, the Android screen should also get mirrored. It's worked, as you guys can see. Again, there is a little bit of lag, but it's quite minimal. And above all, it's working absolutely fine. Let's try Samsung DeX. So connect wirelessly. There you go, it's actually found it, W13. Click on it to connect. And hopefully we should have Samsung DeX running on the big screen wirelessly. There you go, guys. How useful is that? Now, the next thing I do want to test is that USB 2 port. What can you do with it? Can you play back movies? Well, we're gonna test that. I've got a USB flash drive and it's got a few files on there. Let's uh, try playing them back. So nothing happening. I can't access the flash drive. Um, it may not be compatible. I just connected a 128 gigabyte 
SanDisk flash drive. It's a USB 3 drive. I plugged it into the USB 2 port on this projector and nothing happening. So it's not supporting this flash drive. Let's try another one and see if it makes a difference. So I've just plugged in an 8 gigabyte flash drive and yes, you can access it. I tested out 4K videos and they are unsupported. I'll quickly show you that as well. So for trying to play back a 4K video and it's unsupported as expected. Let's go back and try a 1080p file. I've got a movie here and I'm going to try playing it back. And you can see it's working fine. I got it. Yeah. Congress, Senate. So that means you can certainly play back your movie collection from a USB drive. You just need to make sure it's a 1080p video and you can see this one is formatted NTFS and it's working fine. So FAT32 will also work fine. Now the remote control is quite basic, but to my surprise, I can point straight and use it. So the infrared is pretty good. Um, it's pretty responsive and it works great. So it does the job. Okay, so now we're gonna switch the source to HDMI. I'm just plugged in my PlayStation 5, switching it on right now. So if we check out the current video output signal, you can see 1080p at 60 Hertz is supported. Unfortunately, HDR is not supported. And of course, 4K decoding is not supported either. So you can game at 1080p60 on the PlayStation 5. Now, the first thing we need to do is test out some media. So I'm going to open up YouTube on the PlayStation 5. Okay, so I've just paused it on a lizard to get a closer look. And if we just walk up to the screen slightly, you can see that pretty decent detail. All four corners are looking sharp. Colors and contrast are also looking quite good. I want to switch on the light and show you what daytime projection looks like. So this is what you can expect if you try to use the projector in the daytime. So yeah, it doesn't look as good. You can still see everything on the screen. But of course, if you really want to enjoy the projector, you need to switch that light off. Okay, I'm just going to play a few more trailers. Just going to pause it on that tiger. I have to butt in and say, that looks incredible, guys. That looks absolutely amazing from a projector of this price. I'm surprised. All right, let's keep going. Now it's headed straight for us. Is something trying to get out? Many things. Okay, now I just want to add something at this point. Picture quality seems very decent for the money, but the sound quality is distorting slightly. Yes, I've got the volume set to 100%. I'm going to drop it down to about 98 to see if that makes things better. Most magical kingdom. Founded by a king with the power to grant wishes. You are the happy birthday, Tola. This is our team. He wants us for a pet. It's great. I'm sorry, I don't throw my claws in the air. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I don't wave them like I just don't care. What's up, my This is for your own good, on the waterfall. Recently saved the world with your friends. <laughs> I've also opened up Netflix from the PlayStation 5. So Netflix HD is supported, which is certainly a good thing. All right, so we're going to move on to some gaming. First game we're testing is Astro's Playroom.
Inside the box, you will find a user manual, some large cotton tips and a cleaning cloth, and instructions on how to clean the lens. You also get a mini tripod, a 3.5mm to RCA cable for your old school connections like VCR, camcorder, etc. This also comes with an HDMI cable, a power supply, and quick close up will tell you it's a 48 watt power supply. You're getting a standard infrared remote control powered by two AAA batteries, which are not included in the box. And quite surprised to see that you also get a handy zip up travel bag to keep everything neat and tidy. So there you have it guys, that was the Seabest W13. And here are my thoughts. For the price, the picture quality and brightness is actually not bad. Screen mirroring works well and fan noise is also on the lower side. Remote control is also quite responsive and you gotta love that compact design. Now there are a few caveats to consider. You get no HDR, there is no 4K decoding and the built-in speakers are quite poor quality. Nevertheless, for the price, this is still not bad as a beginner budget projector. So to sum this one up, here is my top video projector chart for 2024, where you'll find my recently reviewed projectors ranked by projection quality and features. And as you can see, I have ranked this projector at position 12 on this chart and given it an overall rating of 3.5 out of 5. So that should certainly give you guys a better idea of what I think of this projector. If you have any questions, you guys know what to do. That's all for this video. If you want to see more of my latest and greatest unbiased tech reviews, hit the like button, sub to the channel and hit the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.